Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about the sinus symptom that the women usually have during second trimester of pregnancy. And this trimester belongs to 13 to 28 week of gestation. So in the first trimester, we discussed many symptoms that the women may have. And out of them, many will disappear. Okay like uh, frequency of micturition now there is no urging for voiding again and again because uh, in this second trimester now the uterus is straightened up and the pressure which is ex exerting because of its antiverted position now it is relieved okay so there is no further frequency of micturition is there and the morning sickness that is nausea and vomiting also disappears although uh, some women may have but uh, in normal pregnancy in many of the cases this subside with the first trimester okay this will not continue in second and third trimester but the symptom that is present in first trimester is still continued and will persist in third trimester also okay so that is the amenorrhea that is absence of menstruation so this is a symptom that usually women perceive that it will continue throughout pregnancy okay so the first symptom that the woman may have is the amenorrhea, absence of menstruation. The second symptom she feels is that now the uterus is growing more and more. So she can feel that the uterus is enlarging, the abdomen is enlarging. Okay, uh, because as the height of the uterus is growing more and more, the uh, the height can be perceived by a woman that it is growing and it is entering into the abdominal cavity okay the another symptom that she felt is the active fetal movement okay so the fetal movement could be easily perceived by a woman in this second trimester and this could be evident as early as 18 week in primary gravid woman who is first time pregnant but it is quite earlier in multi para woman uh, she may feel two weeks earlier uh, these active fetal movement so this is usually termed as quickening the active fetal movement felt by a woman is called quickening and uh, this is the another symptom uh, that the usually woman feels okay so these active movement can be the movement of limbs and maybe the baby is rolling or it is kicking okay whatever uh, the movement is there the woman usually feels that is called the quickening so these are the symptoms that usually women perceives uh, in the second trimester like amenorrhea then the enlargement of the uterus and the quickening now what are the signs that usually examiner observes so first we talk about the breast changes in breast there are many changes like uh, uh, now with this darker pigmented areola there is again one more uh, pigmented zone is created which surround this pigmented areola that is called the secondary areola so there is again one more areola is developing around this existing areola that is called secondary areola and this could be evident at 20 week of gestation okay and in the existing areola as well as this secondary areola there are many sebaceous gland which are lying they become more uh, prominent and these are called montgomery tubercle yes it is evident in first trimester only but these all became more prominent okay and this may extend up to this secondary areola also okay so there is a secondary areola as well as there is a montgomery tubercle and there is a thick yellowish secretion uh, which is called the milk uh, the colostrum that could be squeezed as early as 12 week but now it become more thick and yellowish and slightly sticking and this could be evident at 16 week of gestation so these are the breast changes that the examiner can observe okay and but these all signs are more prominent in primary gravid woman rather uh, it is in multi gravid okay now the next is the skin changes or the cutaneous changes and in this one is the chiasma chiasma gravidarum this could be evident at 24 week of gestation and in this what happened there is a pigmented area around the forehead around the cheeks around the eyes so there is a pigmented patches on the face that is called uh, the face mask also so it is the chiasma gravidarum that could be evident and again it is some more common or more evident in primary gravid also 
Then the another changes uh, which appear in the skin is the linea nigra. Linea means a lining appearance and this line is usually extends in the midline of the abdomen. Okay, so it is extending from the symphysis pubis till the ensiform cartilage. So this linear darker pigmented line is extending from this midline of the abdomen is usually called linea nigra and this could be evident at 20 week of gestation and uh, this is called the linea nigra because it is in a line manner which is pigmented darker this is the another cutaneous changes and along with that the women usually have many stretch marks on the abdomen on the thighs on the breast because of the stretching of these skin so these stretch marks are called uh, stria gravidarum strias so these all are varies in length and breadth because uh, some may be small some may be long some may be wide some may be thin so these all are usually pink and white in color pinkish because initially in pregnancy period it is uh, these lines are more um, supplied with the blood so these are highly vascular so these appear in a pinkish manner but later on after the pregnancy ends uh, this all became glistening white okay so these stretch marks are called strias or the stria gravidarum so these are the cutaneous changes like uh, cloasma then linea nigra and stria gravidarum now next we talk about the uterine signs and in the uterus uh, firstly, we, if we talk about the consistency, then it is soft and elastic and the shape of the uterus is now going to be ovoid. Okay? Uh, the height, the important thing which we measure in this second trimester is the symphysis fundal height because now uh, it is more convenient for an examiner to palpate uh, what week of gestation is there because initially in first trimester it remains suprapubic bulge but here uh, in this second trimester, the examiner can easily palpate or observe that uh, what weeks of gestation are there. So, uh, we can easily identify the height of the fundus. Uh, what is the symphysis fundal height? So, at 12 week of gestation, the height remains as a suprapubic bulge. But once it reaches at umbilical region, then it is 24 week of gestation. Okay. So, once uh, the height of the fundus is at umbilical region then it is 24 week of gestation and once it comes in between these two uh, demarcation that is symphysis pubis and umbilical region when it falls in between two then the week of gestation is 16 week when it comes in between these two points symphysis pubis and umbilicus okay but from the umbilical region till the nc form cartilage because the highest uh, fundal height reaches up to the ensiform cartilage. So, if we uh, divide this whole region in an equal three part, that is the area between the umbilicus or the ensiform cartilage. If we divide this whole part into three equal region, then the lower third region, which is near to this umbilicus, is at 28 week of gestation. Okay, because we are just discussing here uh, about the second trimester and the last. Uh, week is 28 week so we we'll just go with this only and later on in third trimester we'll discuss uh, where the height falls okay so in the second trimester the height of the uterus at 28 week of gestation remains at lower third region in between the umbilicus and the ensiform cartilage okay so if we are getting the point there then we can uh, identify that this is the 28 week of gestation that is the lower third region of uh, the area between umbilicus and the ensiform cartilage so by this we can measure the symphysis fundal height okay now next is the ballotment and uh, what we can do in this ballotment we can just press by hand or by finger okay and we can perceive the fetal body mass with the uh, with this hand or the finger okay so let's see what happened in this so there is one external ballotment and internal ballotment. So in the external ballotment, it could be done at 20 week of gestation uh, because before that uh, uh, it is too small to feel. And uh, so what we can do, we can place both the hand over the abdomen of a woman and with the one hand we can compress. Okay. 
so when we are compressing with the one hand what we can feel with the other hand we can feel the hard body mass of the baby okay so that is called the external allotment we are compressing with the one hand and we can feel because what happened when we are compressing the fluid is shifting the body mass of the fetus toward the side and by this we can feel the body part of the baby by this other hand okay so that is called external allotment and that could be evident at 20 week of gestation and what we can do in the internal allotment we can use these two finger and by manual examination we can perform and with this two finger we can insert this finger into the vagina and we can push upward okay so when we are pushing upward what happened the fluid is moving the baby and this baby is displacing and finally we can perceive the body part of uh, the baby with this finger once the baby uh, comes again down okay so this test also could be done at 16 to 28 week of gestation so uh, we are not able to perform before 16 because it is too small to displace and uh, after 28 week of gestation it is too big to displace okay so we can perform in between these two uh, weeks that is 16 to 28 week of gestation so in simple mean what bellotment means when we are compressing this fluid part that is amniotic fluid then when we compress what happened the body mass of baby is also shifting and once it becomes shifted we can perceive that movement that hard part okay so that is called bellotment and that we can perform by external or internal methods okay and along with that the woman is usually having contraction during pregnancy also but these are completely different from the contraction which are appearing in labor okay how these are uh, different like the contraction which are appearing in pregnancy are completely irregular these are not coming in a regular pattern these are infrequent because the frequency is also not maintaining here okay these are spasmodic because uh, at a one moment it feel hard and suddenly it feel very soft okay so these are the spasmodic and painless because at the time of labor the pain which are coming are very painful these are of uh, varying consistency like these are mild moderate severe but here uh, these contraction are completely painless and even though woman is not uh, even aware of it that she is having contraction okay so these are the contraction which are painless and uh, these are not causing any effect on dilatation of cervix but in labor what happened once the contractions are appearing the cervix is also dilating but here uh, with this contraction the cervix is not dilate at all okay so these contractions are usually termed as Braxton Hicks contraction okay so these are infrequent irregular spasmodic painless and without causing any dilatation of uh, dilatation effect on the cervix okay so these are continuous throughout pregnancy but these are the contraction which are not perceived and felt by a woman okay so in uterine sign we have seen what is the size and consistency of the uterus uh, the shape of the uterus braxton hicks contraction ballotment okay and the symphysis fundal height so this all can be evident in the uterine sign now the next is the fetal sign and in fetal sign the examiner can easily uh, evident many fetal body part in this trimester so this could be evident at 20 week of gestation where the fetal body part could be felt by examiner and the most conclusive sign in this second trimester of pregnancy is the hearing of fetal heart sound so uh, we can use ordinary stethoscope and by this we can evident that uh, the fetal heart uh, movement is there and this is the range of this fetal heart beat is about 120 to 160 beats per minute and uh, by our ordinary stethoscope we can evident this in between 18 to 20 week of gestation so these are the fetal sign in which we can evident that this is the uh, second trimester pregnancy like the palpation of fetal body part and the hearing of fetal heart sound okay so in this lecture we have discussed the signs and symptoms that the woman may have during second trimester of pregnancy thank you